Ho ho. Oh my. Oh. Ay caramba. Senior Hobo Tom got a lot of matches right. Oh, hello, folks. Hit my music. Iho del Hobo el Vagabundo. Dos. Now I'm here to talk to you about some Monday Night Raw. Yes, I've just received this unique letter in the mail. From Senior Hobo Tom. And I got the video attachment. And he's going to show us what he was doing this week. Seems like more fun than what I was doing. Nonetheless though. First order of business. So I don't even know whose name that is. Whatever. WrestleMania card. Let's go over what happened here. Wow, Senior Tom guessed 11 out of 14 matches. Did he get, did I guess that many? Wait a second. Let's see here. Yeah, one. He did much better on day two than day one. I think I only got, jeez. Wow, I got everything right on day two that's insane that's why jeez Let's see one two three four seven yeah wow i did guess he did guess 11 correct out of 14. Uh, the match of the night how's my Wow, no, I got that Stone Cold Lock wrong. Got both Stone Cold Locks wrong. So, yeah, no bonus for him. No bonus for you. So, therefore, he was, although, that's impressive. I think. What is, what's the percent? Let's do this mathematically and objectively. 14 divided. 11, no, oh wow, he guessed over 78% correct, you know what, I'll say that's good enough, he was inside the head of one John, well, one Paul Levesque. So without all that being said, um, that was pure chaos those two nights. Let's get a little bit to his raw notes. Again, I received this in the mail. And then on the trustworthy phone. Let's see here. This is where he was. I don't know where he was but but look at look at this one image how peaceful this image looks i don't even know if you can see that look at that what's he doing i have no idea i'll try and build that later though so again trusty raw trusty raw notes um i think the challenge was how many highlights from wrestlemania are going to have tonight and it was a lot uh starts off at Fifth Third Arena, I think it's Fifth Third Arena. It's located in the University of South Florida. They're getting some money right now, folks. I should apply to work there, especially since the money's good. But so is um, Lashley. Was there signing autographs? Matt Riddell shows up, and Lashley's like, "I don't even want to put up with your garbage nonsense." Yeah, bro. You said you would fight anywhere, bro. Like, any time, bro. Bobby Lashley's like, boom, and I'll bro you later. So, first match to open up. Um, Lashley comes down. The lightning bolts. The almighty Bobby Lashley 
takes on Riddle. Um, this was actually pretty. This is actually entertaining. This is the way it should have been for the for the Raw after WrestleMania. Um, Lashley just takes out Matt Riddle on his scooter, wrecks him, just throws him against all the barricades. Uh, Lashley just just beats the the beat down begins. That's all that has to be said. I mean. He even hit the big spear in the corner when he normally posts himself. That's saying something, folks. You never know what's going to happen on that post spot. But yeah, that was pretty impressive he didn't post himself. Uh, that delayed vertical suplex one-handed. Um, then just tosses a scooter. Breaks the man's only mode of transportation. Such a rudo. Is Bobby Lashley... Wow, that's so weird. Um, what else? Matt Riddle tried to try to come back. Got tossed out for his efforts. The, the Bobby Lashley gorilla press slammed him over the barricade into into the the awaiting TV audience. And wow, this is sounding so goofed up because I haven't used this in a while. So, I already apologize for all the delayed reaction you're going to get. I don't know if it's my mask rest. It could be the computer program. It could be me doing stuff that I'm not used to doing. Again, the camera doesn't necessarily like quick, jerky mo movements. Especially when I try to show stuff on my cell phone. Um, so, let's see here. What else was there? Yeah, that was it. There was no floating bro. I uh, got turned in, I got turned to the hurt lock. This is the rare squash match that's actually a really good solid cheeseburger match. And the only reason why it's a cheeseburger is because this actually builds up Bobby Lashley to be that monster monster heel champion. That's so good. There was the Oscar Rhea Ripley uh, replay. Um, Rhea Ripley inter interviewed. And I know she's Australian, so I know there's a little bit different. It's not like me speaking pure España. Um, comidas, pollo y cerveza. But she, she looked like, like you could see her eyes move. Yes, I am so happy to be here. I would like to thank the whole WWE Universe for supporting me. Asuka was one heck of a competitor. Like you could literally see her eyes move as she read a teleprompter. Oh, are you Ripley? No, bueno. And then uh, the next match we have, we have Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin. They, they face war, 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 war. War, war. Well, not the War Raiders, but the Viking Raiders came back. Um, Ivar is all healed up against. Um, Ivar, he just ragdolled poor Cedric. Then it gets he gets used. He um, uses his partner as a weapon. It's always great to see that. Shelton, um, Shelton gets in. Uh, Cedric hits the, uh, Cedric again. There's a little distraction. Cedric hits hits the chop block. The big guy again. If you're gonna take the big guy down, always take him down at the knees. Shelton then, then begins to beat down the clubbing blows. This time, Eric's playing the small guy role. He's not really that small. So again, that's always interesting to see. Ivar, again, he can still do his his um, all his moves, his cartwheels and stuff. Uh, that was so good. He starts to trade blow for blows with. Shelton Benjamin in the Haas splash, Ivar. It's just so good. The, the, the double clothesline he gives them. There's a Viking expedition. It's our finisher. I'll tell you what, it's good to see the, Vi the Viking Raiders back. War, 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 war. This was a good solid cheeseburger match. When Asuka did the interview, she's just so good, though. Um, 
That's perf. Oh yeah, that's right. Trimming my hash. I don't know. They're really cheeky about their their camera spots. This is it's like you like her outfit, like showed perfect between booba skin. So again, whatever she was wearing, cliff clearly lifted and separated as well. And then Charlotte Flair came out. And whoa! Charlotte Flair had some work done because I could have sworn there was a mole or a wart somewhere right around her chin, but that was gone. I'll tell you what, when she's not wearing her outfit, I never realized how leggy she was. She has legs that that, that go up there. Ooh la la. Andrade. We are all very jealous of you, senor. But yeah, so she was in an amazing outfit. Um, she starts to run down the whole thing. Says no. On this. Um, kind of runs down her dad, runs on Asuka, runs on Lacey Evans, the whole women's revolution. We'll see what happens between her and Rhea Ripley, probably for some SummerSlam. And this leads us to a rematch. And again, I'm not necessarily a big fan of a rematch. Especially when it's right after the main event. Because it just feels like you're giving away the match for free. It's like, why did I spend my time to watch this match? You know, it was I thought it was a good match. Uh, Oscar Rhea Ripley, they start off calling out a, a, a tie-up. Again, they kind of jock it a little bit. And they're like, Pff. you know what? Heck with wrestling, we're just going to brawl it out. And ouch! That top rope. Again, that just... Felt awkward after the kick to the back of the head. My goodness. Asuka was being snug, I think. I think Asuka's trying to show Rhea Ripley a little bit. Say, hey, listen, we have to be snug with, with each other. This is, we have to make this show look good. Um, Asuka again. She misses it was like her combo, her missile drop kick. That was good. A pop-up knees, always a really good spot. Um, and then, again, Sri Ripley's tune, turn. That standing grill lock is awesome. And and there wasn't, it was, again, it was weird. There was, uh, I could have sworn there was a three count here somewhere. And then, and then it got botchy. And, I mean, Asuka looked like she covered her face. Looks like she, she got her, her tooth knocked out again. I think the only thing they did to really kind of save the botch. And I wasn't really a big fan of this. Because they actually had a really good match going. But then Charlotte interfered. I'll tell you that that kind of took away from the magic feeling of this match. Because you're like, oh my, Asuka might actually win this. But no, Charlotte Flair come, comes out, interferes. And I think they did it because it started to get botchy. The timing wasn't there after a while. I don't know what Rhea Ripley did to Asuka. Asuka's normally like impeccably smooth. So I don't know if Rhea Ripley just has to get back up to speed. The WrestleMania match was really good, I thought. This just seemed, again, botchy. The timing was off. And then I think it just felt like they sent... Charlotte Flair has saved the match. Mm. It's the dusty old can of thoop. Then we had Maurice and Maurice. It's good to see Maurice back. Maurice. Maurice is still hot after having two kids. I can't believe the Miz would have a vasectomy. Why ruin all the fun? Terrible. Um, and Nia and Shayna were watching the slip and fall of Mandy Rose. That was funny. Oh, and I missed it. Boss lady. You made me miss. Wardrobe malfunctions. And women slipping down slippery metal steps. No bueno. No more pickles for you. No pickles. Um, so, yeah. That was just fun to see. Like I like I saw the replays of, of of things falling out of women's 
Might as well have been bikini tops. I miss that live. That crowd, so lucky. But yeah, then then my Jack says gets the yips, and I'm like, really. Um, we have Alexa, Alexa's swing set. She has a new doll. Lily, I wonder if, and I know there's like legends of like Lilith, the first true wife of Adam. But she was like really evil though. Again, so we have evil bliss. And when she said Lilith, Lily, Lilith, ugh, just got a little un poco weird. Then we had Ms. TV. Um, they're teasing, and this time it's with Maurice. She's so good. Mundo. Mundo's like the third wheel. I honestly hope they break them up. Because Johnny Mundo is so good by himself. Um, he starts to talk a bunch of good stuff about how they made Bad Bunny look good in the ring. Then Damian Priest comes out and interrupts them. Uh, Miz just kills Kayfabe. Kayfabe is, is all but dead, folks. She, she's that 70-year-old woman. She's that 96-year-old grandmother waiting at the steps of heaven. Kayfabe is dead. Um, so Maurice, Maurice, <laughs> goes after Priest, <laughs> and Priest just calls him an idiot. It was just bad. Um, this leads us to a uh, Miz and Morrison versus Damien Priest handicap match. Uh, pretty good. I mean, again, the Miz and Morrison, they not, they know how to work these matches. Uh, good, good double teams against Damien Priest, Miz. Again, I just want to know when Johnny Mundo's gonna break up with him. Uh, let's see here. Then Mundo, oh, Johnny Mundo's so good though. It's so amazing. And I hit that switch, darn it. There we go. Let's see, it's chair like certain positions. Yeah, if you lean too far forward all the time, it just kind of very slowly sinks. Because you actually have to keep straight, but it is a really comfortable office chair. Then kind of moving around trying to figure out stuff. Um, Mundo, the, uh, he, he eats the clothesline. Miz misses his kind of short clothesline to the upper rope. Uh, Priest goes over the top, top. But there was, he goes up to the top rope with Johnny Mundo. But there was no super Spanish fly. We must have the Spanish fly. One of the greatest wrestling moves of all time. It's so pre so pre looking. Um, Priest and goes down, kind of splits the legs, splits his legs. Um, again, Mundo, again, he's so good. Miz Miz gets pinned. Miz actually gets the pin after cheating. Um, I think Mundo like tried to rip his pants off. It was dirty pin. Even Miz, Miz helped him out. Even Maurice helped her out. At least she helped her man out. Uh, this was a good match. It was a ham sandwich of a match. The next is a little bit more between Nia Jax having the yips with, and Shayna Baszler's there. Shayna Baszler looks just. She's so over it. There's the one page of notes. Gone. Let's see. Then we have Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke, who look still look absolutely amazing. And I have no idea how those bottoms actually stay where they should. It's literally one small triangle patch in front, one larger triangle patch in the back, held up by pantyhose. Ooh. I like that image. Take on Nia Jax and Shannon Baser. Shannon Baser just looks cute. Nia Jax, not so much. Uh, Dana goes into the corner. <laughs> she she has corner to corner by Nia Jax. That was great. Um, Shayna's good. Again, she does a stretch muffler and then whips her into the second turnbuckle by that. <laughs> Wait a second. Oh, yeah. I, I just realized this. I saw Dana Brooks' ass tattoo. It's always weird. I'm like... 
What's that? That's a tattoo. She has a tattoo on her ass. God, I thought only strippers had that. Wow. Dana Brooke, wow, do you disappoint. Uh, there was no tilt-a-roll DDT that was countered by Nia Jax. Mandy could not hit the fairy tale ending either. And then Nia had a case of the yips. Um, she fell down. Everyone laughs at her. Dana Brooke and Mandy Rose just, like, left. Well, what the... This is a can of soup. So then when uh, MVP came out, he's like, no, Bobby Lashley's not going to be here. Bobby Lashley says, you guys are a bunch of chumps. I'm going to speak in this place. But Drew McIntyre is a true warrior. He was amazing. Uh, pumps up Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre eventually comes out. Braun Strowman shows up. Randy Orton then shows up. They all want a piece of the new title. Adam Pearce says, you know what? We're just going to have a three-way match, and whoever wins gets to go on the face. Whoever. Who did win that? Oh, yeah, that's right. Drew McIntyre. So we'll see that at the next pay-per-view. That'll be interesting. I think... I mean, hopefully WWE is just getting a feel about how the live crowd situation goes. So we'll see how that goes. And then it was the New Day taking on Jackson Riker and Elias. Oh, walk with Elias. Oh, walk with Elias. Okay, feel like... oh, no, I'll still get. I'll still get to the gym. So yeah, I'll finish this up. Maybe I'll edit it tomorrow. Who knows? Um, kind of the good double teams by the New Day. The double X handle blows. Again by Elias. That was pretty good. Jumps from the top rope for the clothesline. Uh, Xavier Wood plays the role of the small guy. Kofi gets the hot tag. Um, this was weird because this was, again, really quick. Again, um, no one has... For some reason, yeah, I don't know if it's just the weather or if they're tired, but for some reason, no one had, like, ups for this show. And by ups, I mean, like, all their energy was kind of low. Like, the way my mask is untightening itself, so I just don't feel like tying it up right now. But, yeah, no one had, like, ups. It was weird. Then they did the double, uh, they did the double sus suspended stomp. I guess they called them the morning wood. Yeah, New Day wins. It was a ham sandwich. And then Drew McIntyre versus Braun Strowman versus Randy Orton. Randy Orton came out with new gear, and I do like that. We see a new turning of the leaf of Randy Orton. Um, Orton, he's smart. He lets Braun Drew start it out. Uh, the double team on Braun. Let's the double team suplex on Braun. Smart thing. Two people always want to take out the bigger man. Until, of course, they can do catch as catch can and, and, and sneak attack the other. And ambush the other. Uh, Braun, again, he has the, the, the double shoulder tackle. That actually looked really good. The Braun Express, however, did not work. Uh, Drew eventually is stuck up on a table by Randy Orton. Very classic of that. Then there was a Scottish headbutt. was countered by the eye poke. That's a good question. Which is the stronger move? The Scottish headbutt or the straight bump to the eye. We're not too sure about that yet. Uh, again, Drew came with a comeback. Again, he pulled off a great neck breaker, though, and it's chop time. And then <laughs> gets bonked on the table and then sent into the comfy chairs. Um, Braun runs over Orton, however... Drew stops him. Orton hits the draping DDT onto the Big Show. RKO, RKO. Strowman eats the RKO. But then. And then also eats the Claymore. And then that was it. So uh, Drew McIntyre won. I think he actually pinned Braun Strowman. And now the thing is. It's going to face Bobby Lashley or Orton. And then T-Bar and Mace came out. 
Are they going to be part of the Hurt Order now? The Hurt Business? Who knows? Maybe they could be the true hired goons. This match was pretty good. This match actually was pretty fun. And solid cheeseburger match. That was a Monday Night Raw. I do apologize for it getting to you as slowly as it did. Senior Hobo Tom. He sent some videos along to show you people what he did this whole week instead of making the show and making me do it in his place. Other than that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, and hopefully we'll see It's a jacuzzi. Should be a quick, very quick tour. The gym area. There's an indoor pool. <laughs> the magic key. Yeah, don't have to pay attention to the signs. One outdoor pool. That's one of them. I'll show you the other one later. Time to go for a swim. It's in here. You even have your own private workout room with TVs. I don't know how much the TV works. I don't even know if the TVs are on. I mean, it's just kind of like basic machines. I mean, if you really want some physical exercise, there's the place. I mean, it's not freaking Venice Beach, California, but something. I might have lied to you because here's the second pool. I know there's a third one out here somewhere. And there's this area. 